Morning, boys. It's uh, Tuesday, 9-19. Gonna get this thing out of here because they haven't approved the work yet. So we're gonna wait on that and then see what they wanna do. Supposedly, somebody else did the time belt at 20,000, well, 20,000 miles ago. So we'll see. Um, they're gonna call them up and see if they has warranty. If it does, then they'll take it over there to get it done. If not, then we're, we'll go ahead and take care of it. I'm gonna finish up the Ford because I, I gotta get that thing off the lift. I got another car off front with the check engine lights. That'll be fun. I know you guys like the diagnostic videos. Um, they do take a long time though. Like I always say, I like making them, but <laughs> they take a long time to make. It's like, ah, oh, shit. So, but if you guys like it, I'll do it for you guys. Um, Sargon's over here probing in my toolbox. What? Okay, so you wanna, you wanna be with me, but you don't wanna be with me. All right. Cats are like women, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's get to work. Thanks for coming out tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I forgot to connect the cam sensor. <laughs> Alright boys, got the Honda in the shop. I mean the Subaru. I don't even know what, thing, what year this thing is, but let's look at the check engine light and see what it's doing. All right, gentlemen, right off the bat, uh, we have really low power. Uh, you know, I test drove it, it has really low power. It has a P0328 code, knock sensor one circuit, high input bank one. All right, so this is the code we got, uh, P0328. Knock sensor one circuit, high input bank one. Uh, let's look at the bank, at the, at the knock sensor and see what it's doing. So looking at the freeze frame data here for the code when it came on, it looked like it wasn't moving at all. RPM was at 1200, map sensor was at 6.7, long term and short term were at zero. Um, it wasn't, was it in a closed loop? It was an open loop. And we had engine coolant temperature at 188, calculo 3.5. Um, yeah, I think, well that's the, that's the fuel. That's the snapshot of the of the code when it happened. So let's look at the possible causes for this code. Sargon, Sargon, I don't fucking jump, bro. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Get over here. Come on. No, get out fucking out of here. Get out of here. Jesus. All right, gentlemen. This is actually a perfect example of why you should always read your diagnostic trouble trees, but you should know better than your diagnostic trouble trees and make sure that you know, hey, maybe the first step in this diagnostic trouble tree isn't the right one, and I should probably go to the second one and see what it's about, okay? So let me read to you guys. All right, so let me read to you guys what the diagnostic trouble tree is uh, for the P0328 knock sensor code. So the first step they want us to do is to turn the ignition off disconnect the ECM connector B1363030 pin connector using an ohm meter. It wants us to measure the resistance between ground and the ECM connector B136. They want us to disconnect the damn computer. <laughs> now I don't know where the computer is on this car, 
And I would guess it's not easy to get to, and it's not gonna be easy to disconnect, disconnect it, and then ohm it out, and then see if the freaking, if it's you know grounded. I'm not gonna do that, okay? Because the second step, it's pretty much, it's way easier. It says disconnect the electrical connector from the knock sensor using, and then using an ohm meter, measure resistance between ground and and uh, knock sensor harness. Jesus. So I'm going to go to the second step and do that first before I do the, the first step. Why? Because this is easier to get to and because it's easier to get to. <laughs> if I find the problem at the knock sensor, then great. If I don't, then, then I'll start looking at the rest of the wiring. But right now, I'm not going to go through all these steps. I mean, the first step of removing the ECM and the connector and all that stuff because that's going to take way too long. All right. So remember, when you're looking at diagnostic trouble trees, always look at the steps that they tell you to go through first, okay? Because sometimes the engineers, they don't realize that the ECM is really hard to get to. <laughs> so they like mix up the steps. So be like, well, which one's the easiest to do first? That's what I always think when I'm looking at diagnostic trouble trees. Sometimes they tell me, hey, go to the knock sensor, disconnect it, ohm it out. And then if it's bad, then go to the second step. Most, but a lot of times you'll have like really weird stuff like this, like remove the dash, get to the ECM, disconnect this, and then disconnect the, the freaking rear end. You know what I mean? So it'll give you really weird, uh, really, re really weird stuff to do before you get to the easy stuff. So look at it, make sure you know which one's the easiest stuff to do. Do the easiest step, then go to the harder ones at the end because you don't want to waste a lot of time, okay? especially if you're flat rate. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the knock sensor on this car, check it, uh, check the wiring, make sure that it's not short circuited anywhere. And then if that's all good, then I'll check the ECM. But more than likely, it's gonna be a wiring problem somewhere in the knock sensor area, okay? I'm hoping. Um, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, let's get to it. All right, the knock sensor is really easy to get to. It's right on top of the motor. So I'm gonna disconnect it, then measure ground to the second pin of the connector. And then if it's under 400 ohms, then the, the knock sensor is bad. If it's more than 400 ohms, then we have a wiring problem somewhere. It's pretty easy to get to, it's right here. I'm not gonna like touch it too hard. I'm gonna be really careful when I touch it because it might, I might have an electrical problem somewhere around here. So I'm looking at around, make sure there's nothing weird going on. You know, because the last thing you want is to move it and then fix the problem, but you don't really know that you fixed it. Um, you always want to have the evidence, and plus it gives you peace of mind. <laughs> so, anyways, knock sensors down there. Hope you, yeah, you guys can see that. This is the wiring harness going to it. There's two connectors, one here and one at the wiring harness, uh, one at the knock sensor. So I'm gonna disconnect that, <clears throat> and then just ohm it out, and then see what it gives me. All right, gentlemen. Let's see what we get going on ladies and gentlemen the day is over so uh the day's over it's uh 752 if you guys can see that 752 752 and uh cleaning up because uh i finished the loft the loft is all set um so i'm cleaning up underneath the car because we had a whole bunch of stuff over here so i'm cleaning up the entire shop just because it's been a mess a filthy filthy mess i don't like having messes actually i'm gonna make a video tonight I have to re-record a video about a ad that I saw that I thought it was very interesting. And I think you guys will get a lot of really good insight from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up cleaning and then finish up this vlog, do that video and get out of here. The Subaru, update on that. Uh, I couldn't figure out the problem. It looks like it's gonna be in the harness but I didn't dig into it too far because the customer needed the car back. Uh, they need the car back by tomorrow like at 10 so I can't really get into it too much. So I told him, I was like, bring it back when you have time because if I'm gonna figure it out, it's gonna be an electrical issue and it's gonna be in the harness and the harness is tucked in pretty deep so I can tear apart some stuff. So they said, okay, well, we'll let you know when we bring it back. So we'll see how that goes, but that's that. Um, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't really show you guys any, any of the tests. Um, anyways, we'll figure that out when it, gets, when it comes back. I had to finish up the Ford. Yeah, but thanks for watching, boys. I do appreciate it. Book's coming out very soon. Make sure you check out the rest of my channel for the rest of my business advice. A lot of you guys ask me the same questions, which is not a big deal. I know we got a lot of new people coming in on a daily basis, so it's not that big of a problem. But 
If you guys uh, just check out my old videos, my Sunday business talks, that's where I talk a lot about trade school and business and what I think you should do to start a business, all that good stuff. So check that stuff out. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.